Hello and welcome to our F1 2025 driver transfer predictions. I'm Saga and today I'm joined by the one and only Captain AGX. Hello, 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 hello. We're back, we're back. Hell yeah. Okay, uh, today, 2025, uh, we already have some drivers that have contracts for next year, but obviously there's a lot of, like a lot of empty seats that are yet to be mm, confirmed. Yeah. And obviously, uh, we kind of expected some drivers to stay at their teams, and obviously, we just had a big shock like two weeks ago with Lewis Hamilton switching to Ferrari for next year. And yeah, what are our general thoughts on the on the driver move? Holy moly! <laughs> That's pretty much the uh, res- like. I just didn't believe it. We didn't believe it, right? We thought it was just a rumor that they'd put out to like um, bring attention off the andretti deal um so the fact it was true and yeah hamilton's going to to ferrari like what the hell what the hell this this is a different reality yeah indeed i was uh that surprises you honestly because <laughs> <laughs> we, we've been hearing the rumors of hamilton to ferrari for like a couple of years now but it never was a actual serious thing and now just randomly a rumor popped up just after the Andretti drama and we were like, yeah, this is not happening. And it, like in a few hours after that, like every single Twitter news is just reporting this move and like, what? <laughs> it was it was a spectacular move that I'm pretty sure is going to be epic even more tomorrow, next season, as we'll actually see it live. Lewis Hamilton in the Ferrari, yeah, it's going to be quite a sight. Yeah, let's get into this. Um, I forgot to tell you how, how, how we're going to do this. Basically, we're going to do one by one. So let's say, uh, you're going to do driver, I'm going to do driver. It doesn't have to be in order, so you can jump from Red Bull to Cyber, whatever. Just whatever I feel like is the most exciting for you. So just do the yeah. confirmed slash least interesting at, at the start, and then just move on after that. Should be fine, right? Yeah, definitely. Okay. So, I'm going to let you start. <laughs> well, okay. Should I just get the ones that we know done, right? One by one, yeah. Because obviously yeah. they are a contract, but they can be broken, and we know about that, so maybe... So Verstappen is number one, and I, I don't think that's going to change, so I'm going to keep that there. And based, he's, he's World Driver Champion, you know, Red Bull are... Pretty powerful. I he can't really go anywhere next season. I guess Mercedes might be able to grab him, but I doubt they will. Uh, so yeah, if if the Red Bull's terrible this season, maybe, but I doubt it will be. So uh, it will be quite a sight to see Red Bull not being <laughs> a good car. <laughs> this regulations. Yeah, yeah. My mine is my first is pretty much Max in uh, in Red Bull as well. I was sure there. Pretty much the same reasoning. Makes sense. He doesn't really have a reason to leave unless the Red Bull completely screw up the regulations for this season, which is very unlikely considering they had the most dominant car last year and pretty much started developing this year's car like before everyone else. So I really doubt they could go that car, but I mean, you never know. It's just uh, very unlikely. And the only realistic option would be Mercedes, and that's still like very unlikely. So yeah. Your turn. Uh, yes, next up, I'm going to go, obviously, Hamilton to Ferrari. The huge news. Oh, you don't have to um, copy it, you just have to type in. Uh, okay, okay, thank you, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. For you, it's fine. Uh, oh, that's, oh, look, at, look how incredible that is. Uh, <laughs> I, I've got to say, from his point of view, you know, he's coming to the end of his career. It's a risk, maybe, but he took the risk with Mercedes. He probably knows something's going on for the 2026 car for Ferrari. So it's a good idea to go there. So, yeah, I, I appreciate, you know, he wasn't getting a longer contract at Mercedes. He's only getting a year. He wants to drive, and it makes sense to go for, to Ferrari. It is Ferrari. Like, I don't think younger people understand Ferrari is Ferrari when it comes to F1. Like, there's a reason all the big drivers always end up there. Yeah, it was uh, almost like uh, 
a thing that had to happen sometime in the future and we just witnessed it <laughs> pretty randomly like the 2nd of february was just a crazy day overall like, so much going on damn um, right damn right it was insane yeah mine is hamilton as well i mean pretty, pretty much the same thing i'm gonna copy you for the start probably as we'll clear off the drivers with confirmed contracts um yeah hamilton to ferrari amazing move um actually very excited for it to see next year especially how how it will fare against charles leclerc who in my opinion is uh, a very good driver <laughs> as i obviously expressed that in my predictions uh and yeah um ferrari definitely a huge 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 move for for hamilton and yeah. okay I yeah sure. it's it's massive uh next up look uh uh it's gonna be interesting to see how he does Next to Hamilton, uh, it's going to be a different dynamic than we've seen before because Leclerc is a very good driver, and obviously Russell is as well. But Leclerc's Ferrari's kind of golden boy, so putting him up against that, we'll see a very similar situation to Ferrari where it was Vettel and Leclerc. Actually, you know what? It's, it's not even that. I can't think of a situation like this before where you've got one obvious number one driver in Leclerc and then they bring in perhaps the greatest driver of all time into the team so it's going to be very interesting to see yeah indeed it's a, it's a crazy thing um if when I remember there was like this one time where Ra Raikkonen was at Ferrari and Seb Seb Fettel moved to Ferrari but it was still like Raikkonen already had a title so Really compared that. Yeah, but but Vettel had got four, so <laughs> yeah. So is like a similar I situation. Get your point. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Pretty much the same for me. Leclerc and Ferrari. It's I'm not gonna change there. I don't think <laughs> any team is going gonna buy him out of his contract. He loves Ferrari, and Ferrari love him. I don't really see Charles going anywhere anytime soon. Even if Lewis becomes the better driver at Ferrari, which could happen. It's it's. I mean, we're we're gonna see next season how it how it pans out. But right now, I'm just very excited for uh, for the driver lineup overall. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's that's the, those are the obvious three. I'm gonna continue on with the obvious. Actually, you know what? To begin with, Astri. I don't think Piastri is gonna move. Uh, he's obviously a very talented driver. Uh, very young. I think McLaren will do well this year, as we talked about last time in our driving predictions. Uh, but I don't see him moving anywhere right now. I don't see anyone trying to grab him. And it, I mean, there was rumours about Mercedes already. There's going to be rumours about every driver in Mercedes, but yeah. just nothing, nothing for now. Uh, we can see that Mercedes is going to uh, spice up a lot of things, sure. And there's a vacancy the Red Bull as well taking place, so we'll see. Okay, yes. mine is Lando. I'm gonna pet Lando first because uh, Lando is obviously uh, ex just extended his contract like two weeks ago as well, like just before the Hamilton announcement. Uh, it looks like their their driver for the future, obviously Piastri, uh, is performing very well. But I still think McLaren put more faith in, into Norris if there's a potential title fight next season, for example. Uh, they definitely want to keep Norris for the, for the foreseeable future, basically. Yeah, that is that is what is going to happen. Um, my next one I'm going to go with is also Norris. I was building suspense on Norris. Will he go somewhere else? But no, I think he'll end up staying at McLaren. I don't think there's maybe a want for him to be at Red Bull, but yeah, with him extending his contract, I don't. I feel like it's going to have to be McLaren. Yeah. Okay. Uh, for my next driver, I'm going to be. Go, I'm going to go for a driver who has a more secure contract than Max Verstappen himself, and that is <laughs> Stroll at Aston Martin. I don't think he's going to move anywhere else. It's his. It's his team, pretty much. Uh, that oh, his dad owns the team. Uh, as long as Stroll wants to race, he's gonna be there. Uh, and yeah, their their aim is pretty much just driver's championship. If they get a good car, I don't think they can challenge for constructors. And unless they build a Red Bull or twenty twenty three 
the RP19 like car. Yeah. I, uh, obviously, there's one other person under contract for sure next year, but I'm going to leave them till later because I think they'll probably end up moving. So I'm going to go with Stroll as well. Obviously, he's, yeah, he's pretty much got that locked in. He'll pretty much get destroyed every time he drives there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. So. Oh, I missed one drive, actually. Never mind. But I'll get back to that. Okay. Next of mine is George Russell at Mercedes as the number yes. one driver now. <laughs> uh, pretty much Lewis leaving leaves Mercedes in a very bad spot that I, they have a really big hole in their team that they have to fill in. And even the biggest name that's kind of available for next year, Fernando Alonso, is is still not enough to fill in, I feel, feel like, the value of Lewis Hamilton in that team. Like, I feel like whenever Lewis leaves, Mercedes will lose so so much of their support, so much of their sponsors, actually, that they may turn out to be uh, not the top top team that we used to see them, uh, like in the reg previous regulations, for example, where they won so many consecutive titles. Uh, yeah, having that one-star driver who's also a very big celebrity outside of F1 is very important to the team, and they lost him. They lost him to Ferrari, which probably the worst team they could have lost Hamilton to, uh, if you don't cover Red Bull, but I never thought that Hamilton would go to Red Bull like, anytime soon anyway. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I will go next up. I, f I will also put Russell because, as you say, he is the other driver under contract. I think he's going to have a good time. Uh, well, I think he's he's got to step up now, right? He made a lot of errors the last year. He's got to step up this year, prove he's the number one driver at Mercedes going forward. You know, he's he's got to tussle with Hamilton, try and get a few victories under his belt. And that'll put him on the straight and narrow to, towards maybe, you know, a teammate that, that, that's under him. You know, if Alonso comes in, he'll probably still be second driver. Those two get along very well. It's worth noting Alonso and Russell. So maybe that will happen. Uh, there's obviously been rumours about uh, a certain German world champion also returning <laughs> to the sport um, in, in Vettel again gets on well with Russell so but would Russell be number one driver then that is the question yeah it mostly depends on the quality of his teammate and I, I agree if Alonso joins it's probably still not going to be like clear number one for Russell probably would be they're going to be probably treated the the same, but from my perspective, I don't feel like Alonso should go to Mercedes uh, in the long term. Right, right now, he's at the team that's built around him, and he's like the, the number one driver. Going to Mercedes is could be a downgrade as well. Like you never know if Aston Martin could build another great car that's even greater than Mercedes. And having Russell as a teammate, even though they get along well, uh, I know about it as well. Having two drivers that are so close to each other would just is just a recipe for trouble, as we saw with Mercedes in a couple of years ever since Russell joined. Uh, yeah, back to my driver. Uh, I'm gonna put Piastri because I haven't put him yet. Uh, Piastri and McLaren. Um, kind of skipped him. I forget I forget about <laughs> Piastri for a sec. Uh, yeah, I don't think he's gonna move anywhere else. In my opinion, it's just uh, a very good driver lineup, and they. They really like their drivers, McLaren does, and yeah. Piastri has no reason to move either. Uh, I don't think McLaren is going to drop in performance like the la last couple of years. I think they're going to jump into the season as minimum third fastest car, that's my opinion. And yeah, this pretty much has no reason to leave at the moment. Right. So I just want to say, I think these are the safe bets, right? We yeah. agree. These are the for sure ones. Yeah. In in my head, at least. So from here on out, it's going to get crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I'm, yeah. I'm looking forward to. Um, but I'm still going to, I'm, I'm still going to try and get a, a few like ones that just make sense in. Uh, we're going to start with Gasly. I think Gasly will stay at LP. I think that makes sense. I don't think he's going to jet off. There's no rumors around Gasly. 
he'd go to Red Bull, but he's not really part of their dri- well, he's definitely not part of their driver lineup anymore, and he didn't do very well against Verstappen in the first place. So I think he will stay at Alpine. Ah, that's fair. That's completely fair because I was going to go for Gasly as well. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I think I think that is the correct decision from both of us there. Yeah. So probably it doesn't make sense to get rid of him. He's done pretty well, uh, and he's he's proven he's a, he's a race winner and so on. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, my next one. Uh, this this is right the the risky one because he's obviously linked to Mercedes quite well. Uh, he's he's got a big link to Mercedes already, but I just don't think he's going to get the drive there. So I am going to go Ocon as well to stay at Alpine. I think you know for all French team makes sense, uh, does well for the brand. Yeah, I don't think anything's changing there. Yeah, it seems like we're going with the, in the same direction for pretty much for most of them. As of this oh, these these are still my normal ones. <laughs> I'm going to get very crazy in the latter half. But I, I have some bold picks as well, I'm not going to lie. Just, uh, yeah, these Alpine drivers, they're so close to each other, they're both French and a French team. Yeah, that's, there's no reason for any of them to move apart from Ocon, who could jump to the Mercedes, if obviously Mercedes go for him, which I don't think will happen, and I think Ocon will stay at Alpine for another year, at least. Yes, yes, I agree. Well, next up, Racing Bulls. I'm going to put Liam Lawson. Uh, I think, you know, he did so well when he, he drove for the Red Bull uh, junior team. He deserves that seat. Whether or not he gets it is another matter. But, <laughs> well, he, he should get it, right? But if I, I'm fingers crossed for him. That's what I'm going to say. Fingers crossed. He definitely deserves to be part of that F1 team. Go to the future. Yeah, I think Lawson has kind of a confirmed contract for next year uh, in that team. Yeah. Which is not like official, but I mean, pretty much everyone knows about it that Lawson is going to be in, in that car next year. Just which one, which one driver is going to replace is the question. And yeah, I, I have some spicy yes. picks later on. Um, obviously, I'm going to put Lawson in that car as well. So I was about to do that. And I think after this one, it's actually going to get crazy. <laughs> so yeah. These are so for- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These are still the safe picks. I yeah. I honestly from here on out, I just don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's the big thing, I think. I just I, I have no idea from here on out. I think these are all the ones I'm for sure really sure of, but it just depends on this season uh for the rest of these. Um so yeah, it's it it could go crazy. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, it's my turn, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. Um, <laughs> uh, oh god. Okay, I'm gonna. I, I think Hulkenberg probably still has a safe seat. Uh, I'm gonna say he still has a safe seat there. Um, I just think he's 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 a pretty he's pretty solid as a driver. I think he's done really well for Haas, so I'm gonna I'm gonna keep him in his his drive. Yeah, uh, this is the first one I'm not gonna copy you on. <laughs> I'm gonna go for okay. uh, for Alban and Williams. I think this is the one oh, okay. where we will differentiate. I'm pretty sure you got Alban and another team. Which one is it? I, I still don't know. You may surprise me. But I think still <laughs> he's still gonna stay at Williams. That's uh I know he technically has a contract that is like, there's like an exit clause, whatever. Uh, Williams team and uh, James Wallace, I think, is a printing principal, says that Albon is confirmed for next year, technically. But I still think there's a way for Albon to get out. But I don't think he should. Honestly, I still feel like the Williams team should be like the perfect place for Albon uh, to further develop. I still don't think like he proved enough to be moved to top team. I still want to see him next to a actually proven driver, uh, ideally some kind of good midfield driver that we know uh, as a benchmark. Because ever since he got destroyed by Max Verstappen, he only beat Latifi and the rookie sergeant, who are not, not the best benchmarks. I really don't want to see Albon going back to the top team and getting destroyed by the number one driver, as that would like <laughs> that would pretty much ruin his career. I think he should really stay at Williams for, uh, for the time being. 
and wait if there's another opportunity to build a better team around him. If obviously Williams is not gonna like leapfrog every other team in front of them. Um, yes, yeah, I, 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 you are correct. I've got Albon elsewhere. Okay. Um, I just honestly, my head's swimming as I look at this. I'm like, okay, where do I put someone? Where do I put someone? That's what's happening most to me currently. I'm gonna. I really don't know. This is very difficult. Um, I'm gonna go out there. Put my head. I'm gonna quickly look at my standings predictions because okay. uh, I think they'll, they'll they'll shed a light. I'm gonna put Ricardo in racing balls. I don't think he'll get promoted, but I think they'll keep him on because uh, they don't really have anyone but Liam in their driver's team that I really think could jump up if you get me. They have the French guy uh, and then um, Pepe Marty but I just I don't think they've got anyone else that I'm thinking they're going to jump up uh, so yes I'll keep I'll keep him in his drive Yeah um this is a uh, one thing that I hope to be a little bit different. Uh, I got Ricardo in racing balls as well for the oh, another okay. season. But based on my predictions as well, I, I don't feel like Ricardo will beat Sunoda and pretty much secure the Red Bull seed from Checo. Uh, yeah, I haven't put Checo anywhere <laughs> so far. Um, I'm going to do a bit of spoiler. I don't think Checo is still at the Red Bull. That's, uh, no. I think that, uh, that's obvious for both of us. Uh, Ricardo at Racing Bulls, yeah, I think it's going to stay for another year, perhaps. After that, we can maybe move to another team. I just don't really know about Ricardo's career. It really depends on the season. If he destroys Sunoda, it could save his career, and vice versa. If Sunoda beats Ricardo, it could just end Ricardo's career for good. It's just that season where only one of the Racing Bulls like, uh, drivers are actually going to profit from the season. There's no, there's no good scenario for both of them, probably. Yes, yeah, I agree. Um, right. Uh, oh god, it, 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 it's just stressful now, right? Because I don't want to just... say the wrong one. I don't want to be like, yeah, I think this this drive will go here, and then they don't. Ooh, I. I'm be sure of this one. I think Sonoda is going to end up in the Williams. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to put Sonoda in the Williams. I know it's a random one, a, ra- a random pick from out of nowhere, but I don't think he's going to get that step up to ra- Red Bull like he deserves. I think they're weird about their own drivers, so I don't think he's end up going to move. Okay. Uh, it's going to be fair because I actually predicted Sonoda to go to Williams like during the season that we did the pre-race yes, predictions. Same. And now that the season ended, I don't really feel like Sunday is going to go to Williams. But I'm going to go for a, for another pick that's completely out of the line like uh, from what we just did. And that's Theo Porcher at Sauber uh, as the junior driver that's for some reason, still hasn't got a seed in the F1, despite winning the F2 Championship, as Joe having the most mediocre season ever. I I, I still don't know why Porsche not in the seed for this season, and I feel like he's going to get that seed for next year at least. Uh, finally, as they move towards being rebranded as Audi for 2026. I was uh, also going to talk about Porsche. Uh, there's a few youth drivers that I think deserve seat, uh, and yeah, Porsche is definitely one. Uh, so I will also put him in the Sauber. I am interested who else will be in the Sauber. I may, may, will mention that in a second. But uh, yeah, for now, Porsche sitting in the Sauber, doing, doing, doing bits. I'm excited for it. Okay. Um, since we... I already have only one team that's without a driver, so I'm going to put at least one of them. I'm going to put Oli Behrman in the first Haas. As yes. The, yes. As good, good, my, good, cool. my favorite for the F2 title this year, in my opinion, I think he's going to he's gonna win it over, yeah, the, over the stacked field that's there. Obviously, there are a lot of drivers, a lot of names. Uh, 
I'm gonna main name all of them because uh, there'll be like a, such a long list. Because I think they did like this is the one of those F two seasons like like those we had it in twenty eighteen with Norris, Russell, and Albon. There's just so many good drivers like competing for for the title, and I feel like Berman is gonna come out on top and secure that half seat as they already showed interest in him, giving him six practice session this year uh, after already giving him practice session uh, practice sessions in 2023. So yeah, very for Haas. I'm interested to know, and you don't have to say which team, but will you put Drogovic on this list? Uh, I'm going to say it. I, I haven't put Drogovic on any team. Mm, yeah, see, I'm having an issue with him as well. I just don't know. I don't know where to put him. Like, it makes sense. He should, like, get a drive, right? He was really good that season. Yeah. But, I, you know, and the fact, like, Liam Lawson, Logan Sargent, uh, all, all managed to get drives. We put Tia Pocher on. Uh, he beat a lot of good drivers that season. I just don't know where to put him. Um, I'm going to... I uh, agree with you. I think Behrman will also get drive uh, in Haas. Uh, so yes, another another driver that Dragovic does doesn't get over. But maybe I'll sneak Dragovic in somewhere. I'll be honest. I was very tempted to put Behrman into Williams. I don't know why. I understand that he's obviously a reserve driver for Haas, but I feel like Williams might try and jump him. Um, but yeah, I kept him. I kept him where he is. Okay, uh, since we kind of mentioned Aston Martin already with Drogovic, I'm going to say who I picked for Aston Martin as I think Fernando Alonso will leave the team after the season. Ooh. Just uh, I think at first of those bigger predictions, I think Alonso will move to this another is team. This is huge. Yeah. <laughs> and in place of Fernando, it's really difficult to put Drogovic in there. Because I, I already thought about Drogovic. It's just you're replacing Alonso, Fernando Alonso, the world champion, with a rookie next to Stroll. Like, that's one of the worst drive lineups they could have possibly have for that year. And I don't really see them going for Djurgovic unless Stroll retires, which, I mean, I would be glad to see Stroll retire because I don't think, like, he's he should be on the grid right now. But uh, I'm going to put Yuki Tsunoda for Aston Martin. Oh, holy shit. Yeah. Oh, uh, I would love it. Yeah, I think Sunana will move to Aston Martin with that Honda link. Uh, obviously, Aston Martin switching to Honda power units from, from the next regulation. Sunana is going to move to Aston Martin and be the lead driver in front of Stroll. Hopefully, Yuki can have a great, great season. That's my prediction is that he's going to beat Ricardo and secure that seat Aston Martin after uh, Alonso is going to move to another team. That's the That's the big prediction. So my big prediction, Alonso doesn't move. Okay. So, yeah, I'm keeping Alonso where he is. Uh, I, I don't think he'll get the Mercedes seat. Um, I was tempted to put him on the Red Bull seat, but I didn't in the end. So, yes, my big prediction is Alonso doesn't move. He stays at Aston Martin. I think he suits the brand of Aston Martin as well. Obviously, Aston Martin's got a very swag brand. Um, I can't believe I just said that in 2024. Um, but they've got a very uh, cool brand, very, uh, you know, they, they, whenever you think of Aston Martin, you think of James Bond, and I think that is the brand of Aston Martin. And I think they have that in Alonso and Vettel before it, him, and obviously Stroll's there because uh, daddy's boy. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, that's fair. And I can't just jump on my keyboard, which is not <laughs> that's the greatest thing. I did did just hear that, but yeah. that was that was very yeah. funny. Yeah, thankfully she jumped on the window, so I'm free for now. I'm gonna continue with the lower the teams in the lower down the field. Probably gonna go for the other half seat, as I feel like this this was a difficult one because I feel like Hulkenberg's gonna leave. That's one of my predictions. I feel like Hulkenberg's not gonna stay at Haas. But are you gonna put two rookies in? It's it's gonna be a similar situation to twenty twenty one. I don't feel like they would wanna end up in the situation as again, especially before the big regulations. Uh, it's like not the greatest idea to have two rookies. I just feel like they will keep Magnuson even though he's not gonna perform the greatest in the season. So I feel like they're just 
gonna keep him because they will not have any better options. That's not a rookie. Uh, pretty much, yeah. Unless Perez goes there, which uh, which could happen, but I don't think Perez will want to go from the best team to the worst team in the grid. So yeah, uh, that's my pick. Uh, okay, I'm gonna make my lame one. Uh, I don't think this should happen. I think they should probably bring in either Oli Berman or Drogovic, but I think they will keep him in. I think Williams will keep Sargent in. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> it makes no sense, right? But he does fit that his American owners. I think they'll stay with him. He obviously brings in a lot of money as well. Yeah, I'm going to keep him in his drive. Uh, but you know what? Never mind. I'm going to change it. I want to put Joe in. Screw it. Joe to Williams <laughs> as well as Sonoda. <laughs> I wasn't going to put Joe in, Sa in Salva. So I was like, you know what? Screw it. I want to put them two together. I think they'd be quite a good driver lineup, especially for Williams. So yes, there you go. Yeah, now, now I just changed my mind. Now I'm just confused. You just replaced uh, a page driver with another page driver. <laughs> just... Yeah, well, I was thinking, uh, Sergeant's got the American link, obviously, but he is not a good driver. At least Joe is somewhat of a decent driver. Yeah, I mean, it may depend on, on this year. Like, Probably if if Sergeant wants to keep his seat, he needs to at least match Albon, in my opinion. Uh, and he will not. Yeah, that's <laughs> obviously probably not going to happen. Uh, but you, you never know. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, three seats left. Three seats left for you. Four seats left for me. I'm going to start with the Sauber, mm. and that's oh, okay. Because I think where Hulkenberg will move uh, with at least oh. Audi. I think Hulkenberg will move to Sauber a year earlier. I was tempted to put him in the Mercedes for a season, and then he would like stay at the Mercedes till they could develop Antonelli, so we can go to the Mercedes. I I, I cho chose otherwise. I actually chose Hulkenberg for Sauber for the Audi seat uh, for 2026. And yeah, this I think this is going to be a very exciting lineup. Hulkenberg plus four share. This is a driver lineup. That is an exciting lineup. This should have happened. Maybe it has. But uh, unfortunately, yeah, has this like, this this lineup Behrman and Magnussen. Uh, yeah, this might be the weakest lineup probably on the grid at this, at this moment. Even if I have like Sunoda Stroll and like Ricardo Lawson, yeah, I think the my Haas joint lineup is the weakest. Right now. I would very much love to change my whole of being in Sauber, but I won't. Uh, because I don't. I, I still think this makes a bit more sense. I was going to put Perez in Salba. I think this is where oh. Paris is going to end up going. Uh, so that, yeah, that's a big call. I don't think he'll leave the sport. He's obviously quite quick. I think he'll end up getting a, a, a position in a team further down. I was basically putting him either in the Williams, Salba or Haas at some point, and it just ended up being the Salba. But you've made a good point about Hulkenberg obviously going there because of the link. So maybe I'd swap them around. But honestly, it'd get a bit confusing at that point. <laughs> yeah, yeah I just, that was what I was thinking, where when Perez leaves Red Bull, ultimately, where does he go? Because there aren't many teams, apart from, like, Sauber and Haas, that would actually get him, realistically. Maybe Williams, but I already chose a different driver for Williams. So I'm actually going to go from the top now, as I, I'm going to end with the Williams seat. Uh, so I'm going to put a lot of side Max for Stappen, <laughs> it is probably going to be extremely bold, but I'm going to put Carl Sainz next to Max Verstappen for 2024. Oh, holy shit. I was literally <laughs> going to do the same. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's interesting. Yeah, uh, I was thinking of putting him in the Mercedes, but then I, yeah, Sainz and Mercedes, they were like swapping Hamilton and Sainz. Yeah, that just makes zero sense. I think. After Perez will underperform and Sainz will have another decent season alongside Leclerc, they will want another capable driver who they know they can that can win races on their day and can match a super talented driver alongside them on their day, on their day as well. And Sainz is like a, the best option for Red Bull right now if you hopefully don't go for Alonso. But it's like, again, Alonso is getting into his mid-40s and... <laughs> 
These are difficult with Alonso. I obviously don't think he's he's like gonna drop massively in performance, but still it's very huge risk to keep Alonso uh at this age, especially for Red Bull. So uh, yeah, Carl Sainz for me is the best option for Red Bull if Checo has another bad season. Just just makes so much sense with uh, obviously Sainz and Max Verstappen being teammates in 2015 and Tatoro Rosso as well. Like they know each other. Yeah, yeah. I um, completely I completely agree. I think it just makes so much sense. Uh, he obviously was part of the Red Bull family. He was really quick as well. Um, obviously, his big move was uh, to Renault and then to McLaren. Um, so yeah, I, I, I absolutely have to agree. I'll put him in now. Uh, it, it was one of my last shock picks. Uh, I don't think my last last pick is a shock now. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I absolutely agree. So it's to uh, this, it, it just makes sense, right? It just makes sense. I don't think I think it would only be for like a season or two because I think they'll believe a lot in Orson. And rightly yeah. so, I think Lawson's very quick uh, and should be in that drive sooner rather than later. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, seems like we have the same reasoning. Uh, it's great that we can agree on things, so it makes it seem more realistic. And I really hope they don't, don't keep Perez, even though I, I like Checo as, uh, as a person. I just don't feel like he's, yeah, the, yeah, he's, the, he's a fit for Red Bull going forward. And I, I'm hoping it just science makes so much sense that it's it's like impossible to not put him there. Uh, yeah. Uh, for the last two teams, this was extremely difficult because like the Mercedes is probably the most one to see you had it like for a, for a, for a last pick. Uh, mm. and it, this was difficult because they have so many options that I w- went through and like, but is, is this a good option? Is it a realistic option as well? I mean. Yeah, I, I I ended up with putting a lot of next to Russell and Mercedes. <laughs> yeah, I just yeah. I just I just had to because what what other name do you put like instead of Hamilton? Like there's no note enough of a driver big enough like in terms of pro- popularity and their marketing value to fill in for Hamilton. I, I think still Alonso is still like less marketable than Hamilton as well. It's just the if they bring in a rookie or like another driver from the midfield. It's gonna ruin their ruin their marketing value so much. So they need a big name, a big world champion, and I think they're gonna bring Alonso, and Alonso is eventually gonna retire in Mercedes, in my opinion. So yeah, <laughs> my prediction. Uh, good, good prediction. I think you're probably right with your prediction. I'll be honest. I do think he'll probably end up taking over, uh, but I'm going to put Albon uh, as my last driver. I. Okay. <laughs> Just have a feeling. It's a lot to do with the marketability of those two, them two, and their friendship. Uh, I have a feeling they believe in Alex. You know, he, he obviously has the links through Williams and uh, through James at Williams. I'm, yeah. I'm correct in saying that. Um, so I, I don't know why, just in the back of my head, I, I constantly think it's just going to be Albon and Russell. I think marketability-wise, it just makes a lot of sense. Um, obviously, Alonso probably makes more sense. But yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Uh, the other pick I would do is I'd just swap uh, Albon and Alonso, I guess, would be my other, other thing. But I, d- I just don't think Albon's going to stay at... Williams is my main thing. Yeah, uh, it's completely fair. Honestly, Albon is is a good child for Mercedes. It's just, uh, yeah, I still have doubts over. Yeah, actual, yeah, no, I agree. Actual Albon's capabilities uh, ever since he left Red Bull. It's yeah, he, he destroyed Latifi and uh, Sargent, but again, those are not benchmarks. I want to see him battle with battle with like. A midfield driver like Alcon or Gasly, that those two were like ideal teammates to see how Albon has improved from his uh, Red Bull stint. It'd be a very similar risk to say Russell when he went to Mercedes. I mean, I mean, yeah, but it's we we knew Russell was going to end up in Mercedes uh, anyway. It was just yeah, yeah, true. They were just <laughs> making it longer and longer with resigning Bottas for another year and another year and another year after that. Uh, and they finally put in Russell, and then it was W's right move as Russell beat Hamilton his first season in Mercedes, which was 
even though it probably was more uh, more of Hamilton not being comfortable with the car, it's still a very impressive feat for from Russell to do that. So we know Russell is capable of being the one, number one driver of the, of the Mercedes. And I still, I still have doubts over Albon. It's just, yeah, until I see him prove himself more, I'm still gonna doubt his uh, top tier, top team abilities. That's right. Basically, I don't believe Albon is is as bad as he was at the Red Bull, for example. It's just that. I don't think he showed uh, enough to uh, basically uh, merit that top team seat again. And uh, yeah, fly last pick for William seat. Yeah, I, I left this for last because there are so many drivers I could have put, put here uh, at this point. Like there's this Perez, there's uh, I forgot who else. Oh, <laughs> uh, wait, one of the big. Uh, yeah. uh, Sergeant, Perez. obviously, Sergeant is the, mm-hmm. the driver that. Was there yeah, the season like before. I did? Yeah, there's uh, there are Mercedes Juniors like Vesti or Antonelli, who's obviously going to that, going into that F2 season from stage straight from Formula Renault, which is uh, impressive, honestly. And yeah, the, the driver that I put in is Antonelli, and I ended with Antonelli in and the Williams seat. I think they're, they're gonna put him Antonelli in the Williams to develop. And eventually, when Alonso re- retires, Antonelli is going to get the Mercedes. And the Russell Antonelli lineup, I think, is going to be great uh, from the 2026 regulations onwards, basically. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know just how long Alonso is going to keep up uh, in the Formula One, which is that they need to fill in the Mercedes gap with a driver that you know is not going to want a long term contract. And yeah, Alonso probably wants to, but it's still like this is a huge risk with his age, and uh, you just n- don't know if whether he's gonna drop randomly from another season. Um, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I was, I was, as I said, I was for me the best option for Mercedes is to put Hulkenberg in for one season and then put Antonelli in from Williams to 2026. New cars and until he can get uh get grips with the car after already developing. <laughs> Hello, I, my cat is up on my keyboard again. <laughs> okay, I just <laughs> lost. I just I lost my phone. Uh, basically, yeah, I think I think Antonio is going to end up at the, at the Mercedes within a free season. So they need some kind of a short term option to fill in the Mercedes seat. And uh, Alonso right now makes the most most sense in my opinion. So yeah, please stop, uh, bro, dude. Uh, my <laughs> she's like she's like. Okay, I don't know how to say it. Just she wants to destroy my microphone. It seems like okay. I guess we, I guess we can end this. The perfect end to a perfect video. Yeah, this is this is a strange ending. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to see my mic falling out during the recording. So yeah, uh, we're gonna end it here. Thank you for coming to my video. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. Excited. Yeah. Please leave my microphone alone. Well, nah. <laughs> Difficult. Uh, okay. Any last words for you? Nah, I can't wait to see what the actual driver circus is. It could be crazy. Could have Ocon in Mercedes. Could have uh, Norris in Red Bull. We could have, uh, I don't know, Ricardo in Alpine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> random things. I get you. Okay. Uh, we ended up here, um, and we'll, s- I think I'll see you for, uh, for our predictions for this season after testing. That's going to be, uh, next week. I think next testing is starting soon, right? It's like this weekend. Yes. Yeah, no, it's not far. Yeah. It's then obviously after testing, we do the predictions and then we do the predictions for the Grand Prix itself, the Bahrain Grand Prix finally, that's coming in two weeks, I believe. As February is this short one. Anyway, um, yeah, this is this is the this is the ending finally. Uh, thank you for everyone who's watching this video, and <laughs> we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. <laughs>